Hi, welcome to Ability Fierce. My name is Michael Astor, and today we have a very special guest, Brad Cohen. He's one of the owners and the director of the Accelerate program at Game U. Game U is this really cool idea where they teach people with disabilities how to design video games, not just play them, but to design them. And they can get money from Medicaid to pay for this. So this is a really vital thing. It gives people a skill who might not be able to have a skill and a skill that they can make money with. Great to have you here. Oh, thank you. Uh, tell me, like, how did you, I think this is a really great idea because, you know, I was telling you before, my son, because he has cerebral palsy, he couldn't run around and play, so he played video games. That was his way of getting out in the world. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people think, oh, video games, you're wasting your time, which I don't think is actually right. true. Not true at all. But you're taking it even a step forward. They're not just playing video games, they're making video games. So how did you come up with this idea? So it's, it's started a while back. We started about five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. We started in New Jersey. Uh, the founder of GameU, his name is, is Mike Kawas. Mm -hmm. Mike was a professional game developer. He worked for George Lucas. Mm -hmm. He made some of the biggest games in the industry. The Star Wars games were mm -hmm. all under his art direction. Mm -hmm. And when he moved back to New Jersey, he had all his neighbors and all the neighbors' kids thought he was the coolest guy around. I'm he, sure, yeah. He, he, was, he was the video game guy. Mm -hmm. And he just he saw something there that all these kids wanted to learn. He said, you know what? I could teach them. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter their age and their abilities. They can learn how to do this. They just have to have the, the fortitude to sit down at the computer and want to learn about science and engineering and math. It's all part of games development. Mm -hmm. So he brought them into his, he started in his basement. He was teaching the kids there quickly escalated into an after-school program in New Jersey. Now that's interesting because a lot of kids, now they're pushing STEM and math and science and stuff, but there's no relevance for the kids. And this is saying like, what you're learning in school, you could use here, yeah, right? It's absolutely. a practical application yeah. for this. Yeah. How did you get the idea to bring it to disabled kids? It's yeah. a very good question. So mm -hmm. it's, that is a little bit of a longer story to it. We were running our after-school program. Mm -hmm. And in that, you know, we had a f the full range of students coming in. Everybody, we had boys and girls. Mm -hmm. We had students that we didn't know at the time were students with autism, mm -hmm. but they were coming in and learning in our program. And eventually, my, my wife is a BCBA. She's worked her whole life with students with autism. And she was talking to me about it, just saying, hey, why are you not teaching my kids this? Mm -hmm. They can do this too. The difference is they, they learn in a different way, that they might need a little bit more attention they might fare, they will fail, fare better in a one-to-one -one situation. So us being game developers and, and just learning how to be teachers, it was something new to us. So we felt that to do this, we had to learn. Mm -hmm. And what other way to learn but to jump in and, and test case. So we had an individual um, who was in our area that had come to us and the dad had asked, he said, my son loves video games, just like you were talking about your son. He doesn't want to play sports. He, do, he doesn't go out and do this. He doesn't want to interact with the other kids, but I want to foster this. Mm -hmm. So he said, will you teach him? And we said, absolutely, but we're going to learn from him just as much as he's going to learn from us. Right. I think that's an important thing about working with people with disabilities is everyone assumes that when you put them into society, mm -hmm. they're getting all the benefits. But I think there's also benefits of learning from the people with disabilities. Absolutely. I mean, it's... Uh, a bit of a, a tangent to, to this, but we have 50 or 60 teachers now mm -hmm. in our program. These teachers are professional video game developers. Mm -hmm. They are not special education teachers. Mm -hmm. But what we've learned, well, two things. One, we've given them training. Mm -hmm. So we, we provide, uh, we have teachers who do workshops for our teachers, teaching them all about how to work with students with all disabilities. Mm -hmm. And what we learned, though, in the end, there was actually a trait that you can't teach. Mm -hmm. Patience, caring, understanding. Mm -hmm. If you hire people with those traits and that want to do good for society, then, then it's an amazing thing. These teachers have the ability to work with anybody. Mm -hmm. They just have to, they have to gain a little bit of a skill set from an educational standpoint. Right. And then just tap into their own abilities to be patient and caring. Now, but let's go, I sort of cut you off yeah. because you were telling the story, and I think we got up to the point where the teachers were learning from the kid. Right. So we, it was a two-way street. We were both mm -hmm. learning. And what we saw was that, to make it simple, we can do this. Mm -hmm. And they can do this. Mm -hmm. That this, this, 
this student in particular had an aptitude for 3D modeling, mm -hmm. which is one aspect of video game development. It's where you take an object, and instead of drawing it in a 2D fashion, you're actually modeling it on the screen in 3D. That can then go into a video game or an architectural... You know, there's, there's applications for 3D modeling outside of video games, mm -hmm. um, and I could talk about that a little bit about job creation down the road. But he was able to really 3D model as good as anybody, if not better. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a part of it where the spatial sense maybe mm -hmm. is different, mm -hmm. and they're able to, the memory... Well, now you're talking yeah. about someone with autism. With autism, in, right. okay. in this case. Mm -hmm. And he did really well at it. Mm -hmm. And we then tested, we had a couple more students come in. And along the way, one of the students mentioned to us, they, they, we were, Medicaid was completely unknown to us mm -hmm. in the whole self-direction world. We didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. These parents were paying privately. And one of the families said, oh, by the way, in New Jersey, there's something called self-direction, mm -hmm. and it's going to fund this class. Mm -hmm. And we said, wow, that's, that's an amazing thing. That my tax money is going towards this, and I support this. this is, mm -hmm. Now you're training students to not get the typical jobs that are put in front of them. Right. Whether it's working, the, you know, the four Fs, I think, is the, the way they do it, the, the food, the filth, and the factories, and mm -hmm. flowers, which the student, they're better than that. Mm -hmm. They could do so much more but they need the opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. So we, by taking, by, by our tax money going into this, they're getting jobs that can then go back to them. Right. And it, That's, that's and another that. thing I've been arguing is that when you invest in the disabled, it's a, it's a, it creates jobs, mm -hmm. it creates opportunity, it's a, it's a virtuous cycle. Right. And when you kind of limit them, you know, a lot of the benefits are structured in a way you lose your benefits if you start to make a little money. Right. And this kind of job, I assume, you can make quite a bit of money if you sure. get good at it. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it's a tough industry. From mm -hmm. all of technology, it's a tough industry. Mm -hmm. But just because it's tough doesn't mean that students with disabilities can't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people in the general population that can't do the job right. as well because it's just not for them. Mm -hmm. It's not something they're going to be good at. Not everybody can be a teacher. Right. So, right, everybody, it's, but it's a, one more thing. Now, you're talking mostly about autism, but my son has right. cerebral palsy. Right. So what about movement um, right. limited? So there, there's a, a great aspect to what we're doing here. It, it's not about video games, but we know that, like your son, mm -hmm. loves video games, mm -hmm. wants to play them. So now we can take playing games mm -hmm. and making using the computer and make it a skill, it, they, you need some fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. So how do you improve your motor skills? Mm -hmm. By doing something, you know, you can do repetitive tasks and they can have you, I'm sure there's a lot of therapy that goes into it, but is that engaging? Mm -hmm. Is it something that they're more apt to stick with? Mm -hmm. What if it was using a keyboard, using a mouse to create? Right, To right. become creators. There's more motivation. Right? In there's motivation in, and we say, we use video games as a vehicle mm -hmm. to teach all these skills, right? And we've grown from that. and. You know, a majority of our students are students with intellectual disabilities, mm -hmm. but we have our, our share of students with physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. And we are open, it's, it's taught us, every new device, we own them all, mm -hmm. from eye tracking software mm -hmm. to different types of mice to, we have a, a, a student in one of our locations, she wants to be a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's in a wheelchair. She mm -hmm. has very minimal mobility. It's, uh, she's, she's limited to one or two fingers. Mm -hmm. She has a device that she can control a mouse mm -hmm. with her fingers. I've never seen anybody's fingers move like this. Like, mm -hmm. And the way this mouse moves across the screen, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And she's on her way to trying to live her dream of being a fashion designer. And she, she comes in twice a week, mm -hmm. and she's just learning away. And it's a part of, it's a creative endeavor. It's art. So right. that's where it fits right. into the, uh, our world. Is it game design for us, per se, no. Mm -hmm. But I think we've, as GameU, we've grown out of just being about game design. Mm -hmm. It's about teaching all different aspects of technology. Um, we have two brothers mm -hmm. that are now employees of GameU. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I, I forgot their, their exact, uh, they were born with... Oh, uh, right, I think it's spinal bifida. Spinal bifida, yeah. yes. Yeah. So they, limited mobility, mm -hmm. but these guys, I mean, it hasn't stopped them one bit. I mean, they are go-getters, they are... They've, they've done everything from club promotion to one's a rapper, one's a poet. They've, <laughs> they've been on TED Talks. They're mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. two amazing individuals. Mm -hmm. And they came to us and said, we want to be a game developer. Mm -hmm. So they're on, on their way to become game developers. We were like, you know what? These guys, we, they, they started our program, and I know it's a lot of different terms here. Accelerate 360 is mm -hmm. our jobs program. Mm -hmm. 
and they were initial the two initial people that really got into it we were like we want these guys to work for us mm -hmm. you know that they're, they're great spokesmen and we said hey we know you want to be game developers but you're kind of good at <laughs> marketing and promotion mm -hmm. come work for us come talk about game you talk about your experiences in your road to becoming game developers mm -hmm. so they they're, they're amazing but yeah i mean there's there are so many avenues of technology that can be spun into helping students with disabilities individuals yeah. with disabilities um, vr i know is one thing that you had well, that, and that was the other thing was that what I saw with my son was he was good with the console. Some games not so mm -hmm. good. You know, there were certain actions that were hard for him. Mm -hmm. But when the Wii came along, that changed something because that required, that wasn't good for him. It was good for other kids mm -hmm. because it was more like real life. Yeah. And when you don't move well in real life, the controller could be mm -hmm. something you could dominate. But when it's suddenly like the body is actually what's doing it, he's back to being disabled again. Yeah, it's a, definitely an interesting topic to, to discuss with it. I know that my knowledge is, is not, I'm not a huge expert in VR, mm -hmm. but I, I know this from the start, the Oculus team was, had a vision of this, mm -hmm. right? And w there's some moral and ethical thoughts with, with their thought, but it, hey, if this is the future, it's worth discussing. Mm -hmm. You know, they would love to see how, how can you tie technology into the brain. Mm -hmm. So there's a possibility here to actually take disabilities completely we out of it. We go beyond the body and... If you're linking that into the brain, whether it's through plugging in, microchip, matrix-style stuff... Right, right. You can effectively actually eliminate disabilities from... Well... The, from, the from the reality world. Well, but the I mean... virtual world. Some people's movement issues mm -hmm. have to do with, you know, spinal injuries and mm -hmm. stuff don't have to do with the brain, but yeah. sometimes with cerebral palsy and some other... Yeah. It's a, the brain issue. Right. It's not just the... Uh, yeah. Well, what if in, in VR, mm -hmm. your, your legs worked mm -hmm. and you were able to control it with your mind? That's, I mean, it's, you're talking some far out technology right, uh, right. progression, but that could be a, a reality. Right, so we go beyond the body. Okay, yeah. so let's go back to Earth now yeah. and, <laughs> and, and see some of the... So, so tell me some of the stories about what you've been seeing with... Um, with the, like, what are the kids developing? Do you mm -hmm. see any interesting yeah. ideas that come out of being disabled? Being creative does come in from the world you see around you. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in a wheelchair, you're going to lean towards probably thinking that way. But... The great thing with video games is there is no right, there is no wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a story I tell all the time is when I initially dealing with a student, he was like, well, you know, I don't think I can make this because it doesn't, you know, it, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, you, it's a video game. Mm -hmm. You want to make a cow with a laser beam jumping over the moon who's purple? <laughs> what do we care? Go, go crazy. You know, yeah. so go crazy. So a lot of them, a, you know, we, we have a fair share of age range. So we have kids from six all the way up into not kids up until their 50s in mm -hmm. our program. But we tell them, make whatever you want, right? And so a lot of them are kids mm -hmm. at heart. So they're making wacky stuff. And, but there are, there are students. We have uh, basketball, wheelchair basketball games mm -hmm. that people have looked into. So when they make the video game, instead of making a basketball game, they're making a wheelchair basketball game. Basketball like anybody else right. would play, but everybody's in wheelchairs. Because that's and, what they relate to. And... and it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. right? And, right, right. And they want to say, hey, there's a lot of us in wheelchairs who love basketball. Right, And right. I want to play. Well, that's powerful, so, you know, because it's mm -hmm. sort of like it, is, it assumes that if you could be a able-bodied basketball player, you mm -hmm. would do that in a virtual world. Right. But if you can't be, maybe you want to identify with the... Yeah, you want to play the, the, like the characters that I'm, I'm used to playing with all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So it, our students make a wide range of games. And mm -hmm. because we have such a wide range of abilities you see different kinds of games. I mm -hmm. mean, remember, we have students coming into our program that don't even know how to use a mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. So, again, they're not there to make video games as their future living at this point. They mm -hmm. can get there. Right now, all we want to see them do is successfully learn how to use a mouse and keyboard because it an, is an important skill mm -hmm. in the future. I mean, it, technology could change. We might not need it with all the eye tracking and everything that goes on. But right now, they need that. And... They love video games, so it keeps them engaged. Now, video games are complicated. I know, like, if you look at how many people yeah. work on something like Bioshock or, or Skyrim or something, yeah. it's, 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 it just goes on forever. So what kind of game can a kid expect to make at the, like, yeah. the one at the top of his game? 
So that's, and it's, it's very true. I remember mm -hmm. uh, Mike, who's the founder, he talks all the time that the Star Wars games were you know, 300 people over mm -hmm. three years. Right, right. right. So, but that's not to say you can't make a game in an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've perfected. How we have lines of curriculum mm -hmm. for all age ranges, all abilities, and there are programs they can use. There's Game Maker. There's, there's, uh, you, know, you can get into the professional level games. But even like Unity is a professional level program. Mm -hmm. They can make a game within an hour on there. There's set curriculum. There's set tutorials that we mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. that walk them through it. And the game might just simply be: Can the character jump over this log mm -hmm. and not fall off the edge of the cliff? Right. But that's a game. Right. Right. And that can be done. I hate using the word easily because it's not an easy thing to do, but it can be taught pretty pretty rapidly to individuals that want to learn it mm -hmm. and have an understanding of just um, what they want to see created in, in front of them. Um, there's also games like uh, quiz games. Mm -hmm. So not every game has to be this action where, where there's a character. Right. Sometimes you have a game where we have a student who loved presidents. Mm -hmm. He knew everything about presidents. Mm. So he made a quiz game about presidents. And that's less art mm -hmm. and a lot more coding. Because right. you have to code in when they choose, if they choose the right answer, what happens on the screen. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of critical thinking skills are taught in game development. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you probably somewhere along your life you've done a little bit of coding, whether it's mm -hmm. you know, from a basic level up, up to uh, you know, higher languages. In the end, Coding is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. If you do this, then what happens? If then, yeah. If then. Yeah. And, I, and I mean, that's our life around right, us right, all, the, right. all the time is if you do this, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? So if you could teach basic logic that way to even a young student mm -hmm. and through repetitive teaching, maybe they have learned outside something outside of just coding. Mm -hmm. It's a life skill. Oh. So, but the quiz game is just a basic right. coding level. Now, I'm not going to try to make you seem more ambitious than you are, but can you get, have, do you have anyone who has come out of GameU and been able to get a job in the video game industry? So we, when, we, when we started, our mission was that. Mm -hmm. right? We said, we're going to get everybody games. Mm -hmm. On our part, is that a little naive? Sure. We didn't understand um, the, the, dis the disability community mm -hmm. and how jobs are related to that. So... Has it been as easy as we thought? No. Mm -hmm. Have we seen students get jobs? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. In the video game world, not, no, nobody's working for a video game industry yet. I think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We have students that are 3D modelers. Mm -hmm. They've worked for third-party companies that needed models. Um, we have students that have sell assets. So you make a 3D model, you could put it on like a stock photography site. Right, right. And could have video game company then buy the, those assets? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're now, we backed off and we're saying, let's, let's get a roadmap to mm -hmm. this. Let's make sure let's, we can get contacts at game developing. You know, we can almost become recruiters for it. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're going to be the ones who promote this and make sure that we can get our students into this world. Um, the, the great thing is that when we realized how tough it was, mm -hmm. we said, you know what? Then we're going to let, if we're going to take the lead, we have to we have to be the ones to do it. Right, right. So we have, a, we're, a, we're a company of video game developers, so mm -hmm. what's the best thing for us to do? Well, start a video game company. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process now of making our first game, mm -hmm. and in that, we're going to have our students work for us. Great. And we're going to show that this game can be done, you know, and made by our students. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I'm not going to say 100% made by them, mm -hmm. but they're going to help out. It's going to be our first test case. Mm -hmm. We're going to get them involved. And Do you have a... Go, what the game is going to look like, or is it still? We do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in full production. But I definitely can't secret. talk about it's it right now. Secret, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it is. It's a. It's. It's a cool game, and okay. it's. It's a triple A game. I mm -hmm. mean, it's. This is not just a game that's going to sell a couple of copies. This is. A, it's a big game, mm -hmm. and we're excited for it. Um, but the other. It's interesting with jobs mm -hmm. and coming out of our program. Though we teach video games, mm -hmm. and that what we learned from it is, we're not fully. A video game company. Mm -hmm. We're a school. We're mm -hmm. an educational facility. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what we're teaching. We're mm -hmm. a school. Mm -hmm. So if we have our students that are doing really well in it, and they're really good at the programs they're learning, well, wait a minute. Why do they have to be a video game developer? Why can't they be a teacher? Right, right. Right. Yes. 
And that's where we've seen our most success now is that we have 10 individuals right. who are now junior instructors for us. They teach our other students. Mm -hmm. One of them actually was just promoted to a full-time instructor for us. Great. And we, so we, it's just amazing to see, you know, we kind of missed it in a way that we, the whole time we're, we're thinking to ourselves, video games, we're going to get them video games jobs. But wait a minute, they might be really good teachers. And, and they work well with the students. The, the other students engage with them. Mm -hmm. And it's promoting a lot of community inclusion for them. Mm -hmm. They're now with peers. Now, They're, are these mostly people on the spectrum, or do you have... Uh, I, I believe so. Right. Uh, again, okay. we, we don't always know. Right. Right. They, they come in, they have, they have a disability. Right. Um, but yes, uh, uh, definitely more students with intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and out, even out, outside of teaching, you know, we've given our students jobs... We, we, we just we want to give back to the community. Right. right? So right. we have students that work in our accounting department. You know, mm -hmm. we want to get them jobs to mm -hmm. do that. We have students that um, that sort Legos for us because they love Legos and they love sorting <laughs> and they're good at it. Mm -hmm. So why not promote what they're good at? So you were talking about some of the problems you had when you thought that you would just be able to create people who could go into the video game industry mm -hmm. for jobs. You said the disability community was different than you had imagine it. What were some of the obstacles that you ran into? Well, the obstacles uh, in hoping that they can find jobs, mm -hmm. you're asking. I, I guess companies are hesitant. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of people say that they want to help, and, and I believe that a lot of people do, mm -hmm. but they just don't know how to fit it into their workflow mm -hmm. and their company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't have the training to do mm -hmm. it. So maybe the, is there not enough? Do, do companies that want to help and hire need more assistance in bringing in people with disabilities mm -hmm. to, to their jobs. I would say yes, it's probably not enough mm -hmm. being done to A, just tell them it's not as, it's not as difficult as you think. It might take a little extra training, mm -hmm. but the benefits for you as a company are, are immense. Mm -hmm. so is it going to help your bottom line? I, I can't say, mm -hmm. but is it gonna help your company and everybody that works there feel better about themselves? and say, hey, we're, we want to include everybody here. Right. We, we definitely have a lot of students that are driven by getting a paycheck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, you know, I remember the, the, one of the first Accelerate 360 students that we hired to mm -hmm. work for us, when he got his first paycheck, it was just like the look on his face was just, you know, made the way he felt, I, I couldn't even imagine, because I knew how I felt, and he had to feel like 100 times better than that. Mm -hmm. So they are driven, like, hey, like all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want to support themselves. Mm -hmm. So they, it's... Um, the apps are a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think who's better to make those apps than the people that live it every day? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I can't even tell you what the ideas are that they should come up with mm -hmm. because I don't live that, right, that world. Right. So it's, if we can give them the skills, now we have to train them to think about what, what would you want to see in an app? Mm -hmm. What do you think, what, what would help you or other people you know who have the same disability? Mm -hmm. What can... What can you make to make their lives better and your life better? Mm -hmm. So we give them the skills, and then hopefully they can come up with the ideas. What are the, some of the things that, that you have to teach the teachers mm -hmm. um, so that they can work with disabled, the disabled? Right. Um, and what have some of your experiences been with, with that? Right. So what we have, uh, we hire professional, they're BCBAs, so they're trained behavior specialists. Mm -hmm. They work with our teachers in things like task management, mm -hmm. um, crisis prevention. So if they see certain levels of anxiety or certain issues arising, they can stop it beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, they teach them uh, just in un trying, to, trying to understand how a student might react to a situation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is it's behavioral mm -hmm. related. Okay, so they're mostly dealing with an uh, autism right. population. Right, yeah. so the training for individuals with, um, with physical disabilities mm -hmm. is much more going to be related to, and this would be not special education teachers, mm -hmm. right? These are going to be, how, how do we train them to use special input devices? Mm -hmm. How do we train them to understand um, what a student's uh, capabilities are mm -hmm. and to make to teach them in a way that they don't feel like they can't do it, mm -hmm. right? It's always, it's always, ah, they're not gonna be able, we don't want them to be, they can't do that. Right. We want them to be, all right, this is a challenge, mm -hmm. but we have a way to do this. Mm -hmm. 
And then whether it's, hey, next week we're going to work on this, and then our teachers come to the, you know, the, the, high, the, the hive thought, where they'll, all of our teachers will talk to each other, and mm -hmm. they'll say, hey, I have a student that you know, really wants to accomplish this task, but because of his limits with the keyboard or the mouse, what are some other ideas mm -hmm. for us? So we work together. Our goal is to always solve those problems. So what are some other ideas? I'm just curious. Some of the ideas for? For kids who have problems with the motor coordination. Right. It's um, remapping the keyboard mm -hmm. could be one. So let's say that they're limited to just using one key. Mm -hmm. You know, how can, we, how can we change so they don't have to right, be right. At, at the keyboard? Um, always being on the lookout for other devices. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, the eye tracking software, the ones we've tested so far, ha haven't lived up to our expectations. Yeah, I was the, the suspected but that. We are constantly looking and testing. I mean, look, not everybody wants to learn how to make a game. So right. no, no, we no. have students that come to us, their parents, like, they, you know, they love video games and they come and they go, yeah, I just want to play the games. Right, uh, right. I don't want to learn how to do it. That's fine. Right. Totally fine. With the understanding that at some point down the road, it might come back where mm -hmm. not, you weren't really learn. you didn't have to learn about making video games. There was other technology that we were teaching. Mm -hmm. And we explained that to the parents, and some of the students then change their mind and they get it. Mm -hmm. Others go, nah, not for me. No, no, I mean, it's, that's the but world. That's, that's not it. everybody, you know? yeah, you know, yeah. everybody has different um, ambitions and yeah. personalities. And, yeah. yeah, but our at least the to, opportunity is there. That's, that's it. A, that, yeah. That's our goal is to give everybody yeah. the opportunity. They decide for themselves if it's for them mm -hmm. and if they're into it. Then we're going to show them that roadmap to becoming a game developer or a programmer or a 3D model or whatever they want to do. Okay, I think we have a great show here. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah, the no, time. Yeah. It's been great. So, that was a really great talk with Brad Cohen. I'm really inspired by Game U and not just the games, but all the different possibilities of developing apps, opening up jobs. Um, teacher training, up creating teachers. It's, it's, it's one of the most um, interesting talks I think we've had here on Ability Fierce so far. And, um, you know, these are the kind of things we're looking for, different takes, different approaches. So uh, tune in every Sunday. We're here on Brooklyn Free Speech Channel 3. We also have a YouTube channel. You just Google the Ability Fierce, and then subscribe, because uh, we need subscribers. And that's how you could help Ability Fierce, by subscribing. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.